Welcome back to the stars made me do it. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't really. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Welcome back. Do you want me to do it again? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're your hosts, Tara <laughs> and Sierra. I must start it again. Do it again. Welcome back to the stars made me do it. And happy Chinese New Year, early Chinese New Year. Yeah. I think it's going to be this week, depending on whenever we release this episode. But Chinese it's coming New Year up. is the 12th. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about that today. Very exciting. We um, are definitely not experts in Western astrology, as we have told you, but certainly not Chinese astrology. We really aren't experts in that. So a lot of this we're going to be referencing today from other sources, websites, yeah. sources that we've researched. Um, we find it really interesting and I think others will too. Yeah. And it's like, I think, I don't know, when I've talked to some people about just Zodiac in general and they ask me, um, you know, what are your thoughts on Chinese Zodiac? Do you know a lot about that? And it's like, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm very fascinated by it as well. And I mm -hmm. like thinking of the combination of them too. So yeah, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about some Chinese Zodiac today. And um, before we get started, we're going to plug the show. Plug the show. And if anybody in here is listening from Capricorn Moon Group on Facebook, I like got so many people oh liking goodness. our stuff Thank from you. <laughs> I'm not in that group. I'm not a Capricorn Moon, but suddenly my Facebook notifications were blowing up. That yeah. People were liking our page and I'm like, what is this? What did Sierra do that <laughs> caused this? <laughs> like, did you buy people to subscribe? Because you can do that, but oh I didn't God. think you would. So no. yeah. No. Thank you guys so much. Integrity. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, thank you. I was like, I put something in the, like, I was just sharing, you know, what whatever we had done. And there was a lot of people who had related to being in a relationship with an Aquarius who, mm -hmm. um, or a Capricorn moon. And, um, and I, I put in there, like, you know, thank you for those of you who have, like, listened. And uh, it's like, you know, rising slowly but surely. And you know that makes this Capricorn moon happy. So, <laughs> so thanks. And then a lot of people really liked it. And so that that was really exciting. Yeah. So thank I you. Mean, like, we don't have thousands or even hundreds. I think we're around, like, 70 right now. But oh, that's six. exciting. But still, we were at, like, 30. So, <laughs> so yes, I'm very excited about that. Hello, well fellow done, cat, cat moons. moons. Yeah, thanks. You get me. You get me. Um, I would say I'm a pretty chipper cat moon, though. So if you don't get me, like, there's a lot of Sagittarius going on here, too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you are a chipper cat moon. <laughs> I know a lot of the things in that group, it's like it gets pretty deep. And it's like I feel it and relate to it. But I also just realize how freaking lucky I am to have had such a good childhood because it is rare for Capricorn moons to have had a good childhood. Aww. So, yeah, it's like that's a real, like, common thread among the cat moons. And, um, and I'm I think extra a lot of grateful. The time they don't feel understood. I saw one time someone commented that they were, I don't think they said a cat moon, but cap, just a Capricorn in general. And they had like two air sign parents and they were like, the lack of order made it so <laughs> difficult for me growing up. There was never a plan. It was just very last minute. And I was like, I can relate. I mean, I, I feel like <laughs> a Capricorn child would not do well. under You're my an guidance. air parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But oh. back to Chinese astrology, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Well, back to plug in the show, too. Plug in the show. <laughs> um, so, yes, thank you, Cat Moons. And uh, we wanted to let you guys know that it was a grueling effort and we have now figured out the easier way to do things. But we're all on YouTube. So if um, I don't know, I feel like that's something like if you have parents who are into Zodiac and they do not understand the podcast app, I could not relate at all to that statement or Tara, Tara. Oh my God. She was like, I was trying to get her to listen to. Um, and that's why we drink. Cause that's like one of my favorite podcasts, which I have, I've listened to a bunch of episodes, but yeah. And, and you're like, sorry, I didn't hear you calling me. Cause I had the YouTube app open to listen to the podcast. And I was like, you're a fucking podcast host and you're listening on YouTube. We're not even on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we better I get know. our shit on YouTube for people like you out there. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's I on know. YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're so, on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. So thanks for all of you reviewing, subscribing. It helps. And also just like a if you could tell someone about us, that would be really cool. Like even if you were like, I don't want to take that extra effort to go hit the five stars, but you're talking about Zodiac and you're like, oh, this is a cool podcast. That would be cool to spread the word. We yeah. would appreciate it. Yeah. All righty. Um, we so can tell move us on. Before we talk about Chinese Zodiac, what did the stars make you do this week? <laughs> the stars made me do something really naughty this week. Oh my God. Um, I felt very in my Sagittarian element. And like, I feel like often or recently I relate more to the cat moon side, but this was like the most hardcore Sagittarius thing. And also like Sagittarius Aquarius relationship. If you listen to the last episode, you know, you know, my Frenchman a little bit more now. Um, and like, let's just go ahead and say it. This was not 100% legal, but I don't think any French authorities speak English earlier or listen to this podcast. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> without going into too many details it is very not advised to be out after a certain hour during these covid -y times so you can get a ticket if you're out after a certain time and we had dinner at Guillaume's parents they like are in our circle they're regular people we're all careful um and the and they live nearby. And they live not so like, close. Not like you're going far to see them. They they live like it's like a, a 15 minute walk, five minutes in the car max. So like we were over there having dinner, and it's like shit. It's past the curfew. I brought my contact case just in case because I was like, if we have to end up sleeping over here, but like you know, you want to sleep in your own bed, mm -hmm. and. Also it's a five minute drive. Like it's a five minute drive. And yeah. it's like, I had to do something early the next morning. And I was like, I just don't, I just want to, I want to sleep in my own bed. I want to wake up. I want to shower in my own shower and do what I got to do. So mm -hmm. basically we decided to risk it. So <laughs> the, the summary being since like Giam often comes home from work at that time, it was like, okay for him to be out like doing like, because it's like a job. So, um, and I don't advise like breaking the rules, but here I am doing it. And so we were like, okay, it would be bad if in that five minute drive home, we got caught with like me and Guillaume and Gaston in the car. Like we can't be like, we were going and helping someone and we brought our cat with us. Like, you know, we're like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and anyways, this is a long winded way of saying that the best solution we came up with was for Guillaume to drive the car and me and Gaston to hide in the trunk. So... <laughs> So like in the five minute drive we, and like the way all the cars are here is like when you close the trunk it has like a covering up top that just automatically comes down so like you cannot see what's in someone's trunk and um and so we were like i was like thank goodness i've been doing yoga because i'm a tall mm -hmm. person <laughs> and so me and uh me and Gaston rode home in the trunk and I was just like what like worst case scenario what if he gets pulled over and like it's fine because he's like technically allowed to be out at this time and then suddenly you hear like yeah oh, <laughs> the car and I was like you're doing so good Gaston you're doing so good and we have like these big gates to our like uh apartment complex and he's like we made it through the gates and I was like we're safe <laughs> <laughs> so I just felt very like a Sagittarius fugitive and adventurous. For adventurous. Sure. It was adventurous for sure. And I feel like Guillaume's parents don't often see that side of me because it is hard to fully be myself in French. So like, mm -hmm. I was like, I'll go in the trunk. Yeah. Me and Gaston will go in the trunk. And they were kind of like, but are you serious? And I was like, let's go. <laughs> oh my God. And like Guillaume's Capricorn brother was like, but you're really going to do that? And I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> So the stars made me do something not entirely legal, but in my Sagittarius justified mind, it was completely, it was completely justified. So mm -hmm. that's my little star story. I like it. Unrelated, but needed to be shared. And we can now get into what we do. Then let's do it. All righty. So we're going to go over like the history of the Chinese Zodiac um, and basically your the your birth year determines your Chinese yeah. zodiac. So we'll talk about the history, the story of the order, and um, then like the personality traits of yeah. each sign. And we'll talk about what 
specific years will bring. Only only last year and this year because it's going to get to. It's going to be a too lot long. of a lot yeah, of information. There's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and we'll talk a little bit at the end how it can relate to your Western zodiac sign, like what we normally mm-hmm. talk about on this podcast. Um, but uh, so, yeah, your birth year determines your Chinese zodiac. But and there's so there's an animal f- that represents each year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the year is defined by the Chinese lunar calendar, not the calendar that we use normally. So um, it's important to look, like really look up if you want to know what your Chinese zodiac is or if you think you know what yours is. Um, if you're born at the beginning of the yeah. year, it January changes. or February is when you you might have it wrong. Everybody exactly. else can kind of figure out what they are just based on their birth year. Yeah. Um, but it's January and February. Those are the ones you have to look closely at. Yes. So this is a cool example of that. Our two Aquarius guests who we talked to, uh, we had uh, Brittany, who her birthday is uh, January 27th, 1990. And Mm -hmm. then we had Guillaume, whose birthday is January 26th, 1991. And they are both the year of the horse, even though Brittany is one year minus one day older than Guillaume. They are mm-hmm. both the year of the horse based on the un- lunar calendar. Brittany was the first day of the horse and Guillaume's like the last day or one of the last days. So yeah. um, it was really cool to find that out that even though they're a year apart, they, um, they are both the year of the horse. So it does, it does de- like, it depends. If you're a January, February baby, then just check to make sure what day that, you know, it actually started that year. Yeah, it changes either the end of January or beginning of February. So. Yeah. So yeah, if you are an early January, if you're a Capricorn, then most likely you are the year before. Yeah. Um, Yeah. The the animal before. So Mm -hmm. good thing to keep in mind. Um, Yes. Yeah. Um, There's five elements associated with the Chinese zodiac. And they're different. They're different. Where in Western, it's earth, air, fire, water, which I feel like that's generally what people Think yes, for elements. I was maybe very that's like, just because I'm, this is the side of the world that we're living on. Yeah, maybe maybe not so much on the other side. But their elements are fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. Very very curious, and I'm like, I feel like I, I don't know. It just intrigues me that they would separate earth and wood, and that there's no air. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, is air? I, I mean, it is an element, I guess, but it's not like a tangible element, I suppose, yeah, yeah. material element. So yeah. yes, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. So these rotate every two years. So mm-hmm. we will post a chart that we found that helped us kind of explain that to our own brains. But basically, yes. so it stays the same for two years. So we just came out of the year of the rat and we're going into the year of the ox or the bull. And it they are both um, metal. metal. So mm-hmm. the year of the rat was uh, the year of the metal rat. And now we're in the year of the metal ox or we're just about to go into that year. But so you'll have animals in each element where exactly. it's not like, like, Libra is an air sign and will always be an air sign. It's not like that. Like each animal will rotate through rotate all of the elements. the elements. Yeah, exactly. Which is really interesting where you can like, you could be a snake and someone else could be a snake, but you can be two different kinds of snakes where you could be a wood snake and a fire snake or yeah. whatever. So it's, I feel like that's cool where you, you'd think that the Chinese Zodiac is more broad where it's like, well, everyone's born that year, so why isn't everyone the same personality mm-hmm. from that year? But it, you're different. It does distinguish among elements. the yeah. personalities. You know, it depends mm-hmm. on the element as well. So five elements, yeah. and then we have that rotate every two years, and then there are twelve animals, twelve signs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, so we're we gonna are... go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I was listening to some of the interviews and I'm like, I'm always getting mad at people for cutting me off. And I'm like, oh, I cut people off too. I hear it. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, basically we just are going to Wikipedia read something to you right now. And it's because it's the best way for us to get this information to you. So we are quoting Wikipedia and, um, and it's really well done though. It's the story of the Chinese Zodiac and kind of like how each of the elements 
or sorry, each of the animals. Why um, they're in the order that they're in. Exactly. Um, which had to do with a race. So yes. I'll read the first part. So the story comes from an ancient folk story called The Great Race and tells that the emperor, the Jade Emperor, decreed that the years on the calendar would be named for each animal in the order they reached him. To get there, the animals would have to cross a river. And side note, this doesn't say it here, but um, I read on another site that he wanted the animals to guard him. And he wanted the ox the most. That was the one that he wanted to guard him. Oh. Above all the other animals. So, okay. And so they're having a race to yes. get to him to see like. And there's these, tw well, there's 13 animals actually that raced. Yes. To get to him. Yes. And here it goes. Yes. So the cat and the rat were not good at swimming, but they were both quite intelligent. They decided that the best and fastest way to cross the river was to hop on the back of the ox. The ox, being kind-hearted and naive, agreed to carry them both across. As the ox was about to reach the other side of the river, the rat pushed the cat into the water and then jumped off the ox and rushed to the Jade Emperor. It was named as the first animal of the Zodiac calendar. The ox had to settle in second place. And then the third one to come was the tiger. Even though it was strong and powerful, it explained to the Jade Emperor that the currents were pushing him downstream. So he came in third. Suddenly, from a distance, came a thumping sound, and the rabbit arrived. It explained how it crossed the river by jumping from one stone to another in a nimble fashion. Halfway through, it almost lost the race, but it was lucky enough to grab hold of a floating log that later washed him to shore. For that, it became the fourth animal in the zodiac cycle. Okay, and I, li I like the dragon. I like his little story. Um, in fifth place was the flying dragon. The Jade Emperor was wondering why such a swift airborne creature such as the dragon did not come in first. I wondered this as well. The dragon explained that it had to stop by a village and brought rain for all the people, and therefore it was held back. Then, on its way to the finish, it saw the helpless rabbit clinging to a log, so it did a good deed and gave a puff of breath to the poor creature so that it could land on the shore. The Jade Emperor was astonished by the dragon's good nature, and it was named as the fifth animal. So the I dragon was super that. nice. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like dragons are always painted as kind of like harsh, mean creatures. And he was like helpful. And let me I help these that. villagers. Let me help the bunny, you know. But it's, that it's also cute. shows how like culturally in, mm. in, like, in like Eastern culture, a dragon scene is like, uh, like the best of the best, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. Interesting. So, okay. Good people. Good dragons. <laughs> dragons are good people. Mooncore. Don't forget Mooncore. <laughs> Mooncore. Oh my God. <laughs> Sabrina. <laughs> we need Mooncore. <laughs> Guillaume referenced Mooncore the other day. It was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> okay. So dragon, fifth animal. As yes. soon as it had done so, a galloping sound was heard, and the horse appeared. Hidden on the horse's hoof was the snake, whose sudden appearance gave it a fright, thus making it fall back and giving the snake the sixth spot while the horse placed seventh. Tara <laughs> uh, hung on to my little hooves and, and then I scared you. <laughs> scared me and got to be before me. Okay. But seven is a good number, right? It is. It is. So. It's my. We can get into life path numbers another time, but my mm. life path is number seven. Okay, 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 continue. All right. So after a while, the goat, monkey, and rooster came to the heavenly gate. Um, with combined efforts, they managed to arrive uh, on the other side. The rooster found a raft, and the monkey and goat tugged and pulled, trying to get all the weeds out of the way. The jade emperor was pleased with their teamwork and decided to name the goat as the eighth animal, followed by the monkey, and then the rooster. The 11th animal placed in the zodiac cycle was the dog. Although it should have been the best swimmer and runner, it spent its time to play in the water. <laughs> Though its explanation for being late was much because it needed a good bath after a long spell. For that, it almost did not make it to the finish line. What a dog mm. to be like, I'm so good at this. This is fun. I like this. I want to play. Yeah, That's cute. I like that. <laughs> Okay, and right when the emperor was going to end the race, an oink sound was heard. It was the pig, or the boar. 
Um, the pig felt hungry in the middle of the race, so it stopped, ate something, and then fell asleep. After it awoke, it finished the race in 12th place and became the last animal to arrive. I love that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, now, this part is, like, devastating. So, yes. the cat eventually drowned and failed to be in the Zodiac. It is said that this is the reason cats always hunt rats and also don't like water as well. I'm like, where's Gaston? I need a hug. Oh yeah. my god, it's so sad. It is really sad, and it's it's like, oh, what would have been if there was a cat in the Chinese zodiac? I know. What would that personality have been like? Right. What, what would that year have brought? You know. And also, quick little reference here: if you yes. haven't seen yes. the TV show Fruits Basket, or the anime, or read the manga, or whatever. Um, it's, it's really good. good. It's and good. they tell this whole story in it. And it's, it's, I mean, like, the story is based around the Chinese Zodiac. It's really cool. Highly yeah. recommend it. Absolutely. Tara, mm-hmm. you're the one who got me into that. And I remember we just like binged it yeah, with all the our, cousins. <laughs> Sabrina, our other cousin, told me about it. And I watched it. And then I was like, everybody needs to see this. <laughs> And actually, so the original um, anime that they did only covered like the first half, I think, of the story, and then it ended. And it kind of ends abruptly, and it's like, well, what really happened there? And they're remaking it now, and they're going to cover the whole story, which I need to I need to watch. I only watched the first episode, and it's weird because it's so... The original follows the story so closely, and the new one follows the story so closely, so it's kind of like I'm just watching a remake of a cartoon that's so similar Okay, but not cartoon anime. Sorry, yeah, yeah. but um, I got I have to follow up and. But yeah, it's re-watch. cool. They they each kind of like uh, re- or represent one of the animals from the Chinese zodiac. Yes, so you each, get a little bit more character mm-hmm. of the story of the cat there. So that's why we mentioned that. But mm-hmm. um, okay. So, so now yes. we'll tell you about. Oh, and that's called Fruits Basket again. If you Fruits are basket. into that, yeah. Thank you, Sabrina, for yes. telling Thanks, us about Sabrina. that. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to talk about the characteristics of each of the Chinese Zodiac. And although the first one is the rat and the second one is the bull, we're going to end with those because that's the year that just happened and the year that we're going into now. So the first one we're going to talk about is the tiger, but the tiger is the third animal of the Chinese Zodiac. So we're going to then end with like what's coming up now. And what just happened, I guess. Okay, so the tiger. Um, we're just going to give personality traits, like like brief personality traits, because these can go really in depth to the same way um, Western Zodiac does. But as we are not experts, and as we have a lot to cover, we're going to yeah. make it brief. Okay, but it, it's totally really interesting to look into. Like if you mm-hmm. look up what year you are, you find your Chinese Zodiac, and we'll talk again at the end about how you can kind of look up the combination of your Chinese Zodiac and your Western Zodiac. So mm-hmm. uh, look up what yours is, and we'll just give a brief overview now. But it is really cool to dive into. And also, same way that there's evolved and unevolved in Western, there's also that in Chinese Zodiac too. So tigers. They are very sensitive souls, emotional. They will passionately fight for what they believe in. They can be active and a little competitive. Mm. The rabbit is friendly and pleasing. You want to just snuggle up with these sentimental fluffs. Tara, (laughs) paraphrase that one. (laughs) Yes, and also, just so people know, this is from um, the website called Building Beautiful Souls by Bernadette King. Yes, thank you. We forgot to source yes, that originally. Forgot yeah. to source that. Yes. Okay. The dragon, uh, larger than life type people. Everything they say and do is on a bigger scale. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Dragons <laughs> scales. Um, charming and fun, full of life and passionate. I need to say. I just need to take a quick pause. <laughs> Did you ever watch Dragon Tales? No. Oh my I remember God. it, but I didn't watch it. I was definitely too old for it, but I loved <laughs> it. And like, they had like the dragon scale that would take them back to, or take them to dragon land, or I don't know. Yeah, I did watch it because that does sound familiar. Yeah. And PBS like, yes, back in like yeah. 90s, early 90s. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. it, anyways, there was someone who posted in like one of the like, I don't know some sort of witchy group I'm in on Facebook. And it was like, they posted the, a picture of Labradorite, the stone. And they were like, is this what the kids were using to get to Dragonland? 
Batman or whatever, and it looked just like it. And there was, and there was like this whole like fight that, not like a fight, but an internet fight. Like it was a dragon scale that brought them back. It wasn't a stone. <laughs> Anyways, I appreciate the scale joke. I appreciate yes. dragon personalities. And I'm going to tell you about Tara, the snake. The snake. <laughs> Known as the most psychic of all the signs, their minds are always engaged, so always thinking, and their goal in life is to love and be loved unconditionally. Which I think is funny. I feel like that kind of lines up with Libra as well. Yeah, just thinking about like, you know, air sign. I know that Mm -hmm. like this isn't, it doesn't relate here elementally, but always thinking. And then Mm -hmm. also just like, we just want to love each other. We just want peace and balance. (laughs) Seriously. Yeah. And it's funny because you're the horse, which is next. And I feel like it lines up pretty well with uh, Sagittarius. So horse, mighty independent, needs their freedom, very good work ethic, smarty pants, and natural born leaders. I love it. I love it. I'm like (laughs) Sagittarius and a horse. I've got like the double whammy going on, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I love it. I love it. Okay. So sheep uh, or goat. Very gentle and loving, uh, like little angels on earth, but don't underestimate them. They have a quiet, mighty strength that can move mountains. And then we have the monkey, this uh, the silly one of the Zodiac. Super confident, but not overly so. They move quickly when it comes to their thoughts, their words, and their actions. I'm just realizing that. Okay, so that's my dad, like the monkey. Mm-hmm. So that could, I totally like, he is super confident, but not like, you know, yeah. I like it. And the silly one of the Zodiac. Yeah. He's always been the silly uncle. Oh, for sure. I was thinking with Dan being a monkey and a cancer, I feel like that is pretty him. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I feel like, I don't know, my dad is not a, I don't know, serious Capricorn, shall we say? Yeah. He's a a funny Capricorn. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Okay. Um, So, sheep goat then monkey and now we have rooster uh Mm -hmm. people who love having the attention on them they're extravagant they're not afraid to be different and they are seen as progressive thinkers and doers and then we have the dog trustworthy faithful people who protect those they care about they'll go out of their way to help people in need and will put the needs of others over their own needs and then the boar or the pig are the mother Teresa's of the world big hearts their lives will mostly likely center around humanitarian efforts. Interesting. Yeah. And then... So now we're going to talk about the rat. Yes. So that was or uh, the boar or the pig is number 12. We're going to go back to number one now because 2020 was the year of the rat. <gasps> oh. Okay. Let's see what the year of the brat... The, the brat. Year of the rat... <laughs> Or sure it wasn't the rat year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what the rat had to bring for last year. So, um, rat people, they are creative, generous, and friendly, can be low key judgmental, but they're very opportunistic and they do well in entrepreneurial endeavors. I want to pause right here because the awesome girl that I babysat is the year of the rat. And I remember we Mm -hmm. talked about this and she's like, yeah, I'm the year of the rat. We're kind of like the jerks though, because like we push the cat into the water and, (laughs) and I just, she's a Capricorn, but I remember like, so this was a double like Capricorn and year of the rat. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like, uh, you know, if, if her mom was like supposed to leave money for us to go do something and like, she, uh, was an air sign. So like we kind of forget sometimes. And, uh, the girl that I babysat would be like, it's fine. I'll use my money. I charge my mom interest and that's basically how I get my money. Like, you know, <laughs> how old was she? Um, like 10. Wow. 10. <laughs> she's so awesome. I mean, she's, she's, that was like when I first like started babysitting, but mm-hmm. yeah, just like, so, so it's fine. If we use my money, then like my mom has to pay me back and I charge her interest. So it's good. It's the mom bank system. So <laughs> opportunistic for sure exactly like what (laughs) a capricorn and rat at the same time i love it okay so then speaking of that though capricorn rat um before we go on it's interesting if you read through the characteristics of each one you can kind of match them up with other with with the western zodiac 
Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. Not, not perfectly, but it's like, oh, those are traits of a, of a cancer. Those are traits of a, like a horse Sagittarian. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Back to the rat and what it was supposed to bring in the year 2020. So this was from the website. Chinese Zodiac. uh, The the Chinese Zodiac.org. Okay. Okay, so the year 2020 is quite challenging, especially health-wise, but also financially with obstacles, impediments, and unpredictable situations, which will mainly occur during the first half of the year. Motherfucker. The year of the rat will bring beneficial situations, opportunities, meetings with special people, luck, and also balance situations, dilemmas, and changes that can push us out of our comfort zone. Did it ever? Mm-hmm. But like, so interesting. I mean, I'm not trying to to belittle all of like the absolute like awful things that people have experienced in 2020, and like I, my heart goes out to anybody affected by or you know who lost someone from COVID, and and it's so many of us now at this point who have been like affected by it. But like yeah. at the same time, so many people this year have had these opportunities that wouldn't have come up. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. we've all been forced to think differently. Like, I mean, I remember the whole reason that we kind of like started this podcast was when you said that your sister's uh, like library, like they they normally did like kind of. uh, They'd have events and like classes at the library. And and they they started. Yeah. Like how so many people and companies and businesses have done this past year. Everything's online. Everything is web chats. It's all Zoom and go to meeting and go to webinar. And so they did that and they, they wanted to do an astrology class that would have been in person that you wouldn't have been able to do if it exactly. had been in person. And but we were we able to do that. Yeah. And you're like, would you want to do that? Would you want to do that with me? We could do like a, a, like a Zodiac talk for the library. And I was like, not only do I want to do that, I want to start a podcast with you right now and we should do it <laughs> regularly. <laughs> which, which brought about this podcast. Yeah. Which, I mean, odds are we probably would have started something like this sooner or later just because you are very much in capricorn zone and we talk about this stuff anyway yes <laughs> exactly but at the same time like just like how i don't know what order these things come out and i don't know if we will have talked to our guest gina yet but she was saying how like with her no, that's shop next. that's going to be next week okay well next week you'll learn about how she mm-hmm. had to open virtually and she was afraid of all the virtual stuff and then mm-hmm like with COVID, it was like you're forced to do something that you're maybe afraid of and then it ends up being something really good. So yeah. Um, so so while it sucked, yeah, I think a lot of good and interesting ideas came out of it. For sure. Rethinking yeah. things for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, the company I work for has a whole uh, little tab now on the website of webinars that you can go to and watch. Yeah. That we never cool. would have done webinars if because they were all in person. They were at trade shows and stuff where there'd be seminars, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We don't use that word anymore because we don't have them. They're all webinars. But um, yeah, now there's a whole new tab with new content of webinars. So it's it's interesting how people have had to acclimate to the new world. And I think it's so interesting that it's like, no, we're not like saying, oh, the year of the rat, we're going to have a global pandemic this year because it mm-hmm. said that it's going to be a hard year health wise. It's like, come on, like we're not. I mean, it is a wild how when we're looking at this, it's like, oh, challenging, especially health wise and financially with mm-hmm. obstacles the first half of the year. Yeah. Well, okay. Like you've got, you got my attention, Chinese Zodiac. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So seriously. So that's the year of the rat which will be ending on February 11th. Oof. And I saw someone posted recently on Facebook that was like, you know, we've all been talking about like 2020 ending and like that being like, hopefully things change, but maybe it's, maybe it's just the year of the rat that needs to end. And I'm like, yeah, let's just, let's let's all celebrate February 12th. Oh my God. Um, So tell us what the year of the ox will bring in 2021. I will tell you, it will bring good leaders. Well, this is, this is the, um, (laughs) whoops, (laughs) personality traits. Let's do personality traits first of the ox. I'm going to stick with it. We'll bring good leaders. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Let's hope. (laughs) Um, Let's really hope. So Mm. 
personality traits of the ox, which is this coming year um, or mm -hmm. like a couple days from now. So ox, they are good leaders. They are loyal friends. They are a bit stubborn. And like we said, it will start February 12th, 2021. And it is a metal ox year, like we said. And when Tara found out it was a metal ox year, she wrote hashtag so hardcore. <laughs> And then you said, hashtag, you shall not pass. It just reminded me like a metal. <laughs> I know, right? It's very hard. Metal ox? Like, that's... Nobody's fucking with a metal ox, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, the year of the ox, let's talk about that, the upcoming mm -hmm. year, is a lucky year. Thank goodness. A good year to focus on romantic relationships or friendships, just a good year to focus on relationships in general. Mm -hmm. And it will bring the thing that kept that kept finding was it will bring career advancements. Nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, prosperity and wellness for all Zodiac signs. Like, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. It affects everybody, like, which is cool. Um, yeah. This year, no explosive or catastrophic events will occur. So it's a favorable year for economic recovery or consolidation, a year long term investments, especially for creating a reserve stock for the coming unproductive years. And the metal ox year is also great for making order in the family life. After all, if the family life is peaceful, everything gets solved. <laughs> thus, so we have a thus in our notes. <laughs> thus. <laughs> Before this, Tara and I were talking to each other and Mr. Darcy talked, you're like, looketh at my new gate. And I was like, oh, it beeth lovely. Although, thus, thus, 2021 is a year when all of the problems get solved with discipline. A lot of discipline. Metal Ox is going to kick all our asses into gear. I'm going to hold you to it, 2021. Oh, ooh. <laughs> I need it. I need yeah, it. really. So... Mm. That's that's bringing some optimism into my life. And as yeah. a Sagittarius, you know I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the year of the rat is ending. The year of the ox is beginning. It's pretty cool stuff. And like you said, it's it's neat to look at how the the animals in the Chinese zodiac relate, and you could see similar traits to the the Western zodiac. But um, mm -hmm. but oh yeah, one thing that I wanted to say, which I thought was really cool, just like um, when I was a teacher in the U.S., I. I mean, I've always believed in things like Zodiac. I believe like the people are affected by like the full moon and things like that. But um, I know not everybody does, but all teachers, all teachers believe in the full moon. I think we talked about that in one of our other episodes. Mm -hmm. And also, I never thought of it this way, but I had one of the teachers the first year I was teaching, like I think it was my mentor teacher tell me she said something about like, well, this is how I know that Chinese Zodiac, like, there's something to it. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, this entire group of kids versus the entire group of kids last year, this group of kids is blah, 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 blah. Whereas last year's group of kids was blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh my God, that is so fascinating. That's so fascinating. But I thought it was really interesting that just this one teacher, she was like a really like, Oh my gosh, a southern lady, she, like really like biggest southern accent ever and um and she was talking about yeah like I think there is something to the Chinese zodiac because of blah blah blah. <laughs> it's like I love this, but I never thought of it that way, but that was kind of like just like I did my little test trial with my students of like are you compatible based on your zodiac signs? I you can mm -hmm. see it with like the group of students like as a whole, as a collective, we have these kind of traits and you could see it based on year to year of teaching kids. I thought that was interesting. Wait, so I want to know what Chinese zodiacs did you teach? Because you taught for four years, three years, four years? I taught for three years in the U.S. Oh, my God. Okay. So you actually, but you taught the same group twice. Group of kids twice. So mm -hmm. what, what were they? Do you know what year they were born? So we could look that up. 2005. So I would have been teaching roosters so, and roosters. dogs. Roosters and dogs. Okay, so... We took a pause. We looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> After much deliberation, we have pretty determined sure, yeah, that the, they were 2005 kids. I'm pretty sure that they were like rooster and dogs that I was teaching. Um, mm -hmm. And then my second year teaching, I would have been teaching monkeys because they were a year older, right? Than that group of kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
That must have been a fun class. It was a fun class. It was. <laughs> it was ridiculous. That was when one of my students came up to me and he's like, um, so I'm sorry there's a spot on my paper, but I didn't have time to rewrite my paper, but my gecko pooped on it. So like, just don't touch that part. And I was like, I remember telling him, I'm like, do you know the things that I expect to hear during my day versus the things I hear during my day? Because this was on the list of things I do not expect to hear during my day. <laughs> Oh my God, this was, oh, this group of kids. Yes, they were so like, oh my God, the monkey group. Mm. Oh, this is so interesting to think about. I remember when I was teaching my kids about like, uh, um, because I taught in Virginia. So we did all Virginia history and we got to the part of like the Civil War. And then I was like, you know, after the Civil War, like things just didn't get better. Like, you know, there was still all this like tension just because the war is over and there were still like separate bathrooms, separate water fountains. And, and you know, how like when we say pardon my French, when we're doing something like when we are cursing, Mm-hmm. And like you don't want to say stupid in school, so like one of my one of my kids was like, um, "Pardon my French, but this is so stupid." And I was like, <laughs> "I agree. Like, I'll I'll allow it." I'll yeah, I was like, "We can use the word stupid here because you are correct." It was so heartwarming with teaching these kids about things, and they just do not understand prejudice if they're not taught it. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But um, anyways, yeah, that's funny to think about. So I taught like a combination of probably like rooster dogs. And then like goats, monkeys. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. So we also wanted to just like mention if you like, if you look into yours, like if, for example, you're like a Capricorn and a goat, you probably have like crazy qualities of that. And like how I'm a, yeah, you're a, a horse. Fine, then. Mm-hmm. I'm a horse and a Sagittarius. So like my need of independence and, or like an ox Taurus. Oh my God. You probably want stubborn. But like strong willed. Yeah. Very strong willed. <laughs> yeah. For <laughs> sure. So our signs, do we relate to our signs? Is that what you want to talk about too? Yeah, let's talk about that. I feel like you definitely do. So I'm gonna read again, like for a horse. Mighty independent, needs their freedom, very good work ethic, smarty pants, and natural born leaders. So I feel like that is a combination of Sagittarius and Capricorn. That's so wild. Which is what you are. (laughs) Oh my God. Because yes, I would say that Sagittarians are not natural born leaders, but Capricorn sure as fuck are. And the work ethic? Yeah. Capricorn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am so me in so many ways. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Okay, what about what about you? Do you relate to your um, nakiness? Yeah, I mean that known as the most psychic of all the signs. Um, I don't you tap have, into it. I have yeah. it, but I don't like it, and so I leave it alone. Yeah, but if I wanted to get into all that, um, I think I could. I yeah. just i I have the very psychic dreams. I have the intuition stuff that. I should listen to more often. You have the <laughs> sending, uh, who do we hate more? I'm uh, very, very good at communicating <laughs> mentally with yeah. people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess I have that. And I think my mom has that too. And interesting little I know. Note, I want you to tell this. Yeah. is a snake. I'm a snake. And Penelope, my daughter, is a snake. And Penelope and my mom are both water snakes. I am a... What am I? Look at the chart. Look at the chart. Snake. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm cl- Hold on. They're water snakes, and I am an earth snake. You would be. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm fine with being a snake. You know, I'm like snakes are cool. Um, their minds are always engaged, so always thinking. I do live inside my head, um, and their goal in life is to be loved and to love unconditionally, which it's important. Yes. And I also feel like that fits a lot with Libra because Libra just love just want, to they, love. They just want to get along with everybody. They just want peace and balance. And But they're also the sign that loves to be in love. Yes. They are the um, associated with Venus, yeah. which is the planet of love. And yeah, so I I feel I am a... Uh, I think if, if we were comparing them to the Western Zodiac, I think Snake would be the Libra. Okay. Right? I mean... Thoughts? From this description, I definitely agree. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I definitely see it. I'd have to like do all the comparisons of them, but like just because psychic signs tend to be more watery signs, like True. Yep. so um but I think the like, but just like you said, it's like horse almost had the combination of Sagittarius and Capricorn. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. maybe the snake's got the combination of like Libra and Scorpio, you know, like or uh yeah. yeah. 
which mm. are your two like one in your chart those are your two main signs so uh yeah yeah mm -hmm. very interesting it's, it's very interesting and then so another element to add to it is there's something called your primal zodiac sign please look this up it's a so whole fun another thing where it's a combination of your chinese zodiac and your western zodiac and that gives you another animal which is not necessarily like like I'm snake and scales. It's not like a combination of those two things. I think I'm the uh, ladybug, I want to say. Libra snake. Yes, I'm the ladybug. And I've found that like 95% of these are very accurate where they give you personality traits of these, the primal zodiac signs. And it's wild how spot on a lot of them are. I you love are, it. I am the you, dove. Yours. I'm the dove. And what's Guillem? He's like a unicorn or something. He's a unicorn. <laughs> and it was like in the description, it's like, this is the only animal that's not a real animal, but it makes sense because yeah. it's, <laughs> it's pretty eccentric. And yeah. oh, I just love it. Like, yeah. So, you know, like Tara was saying, it's not like a combination. Like I am a horse and a centaur as a Sagittarius. That does not make a dove. But like, mm -hmm. so it's like, it doesn't have to do with it, but they, it's like a combined traits and I've looked it up for a lot of people and it's really, really accurate. So you should definitely yeah. look up your primal Zodiac. Um, I love that. Uh, I don't know whatever it said about the dove. And it was just also about like a kind of like a peacekeeper as well, like being mm -hmm. like, you know, but not in the same way that you're a peacekeeper because you're a peacekeeper as far as like, like not getting involved in the like you, you're staying out of it and being good with yeah. everybody and mm -hmm. i'm like that i'm gonna get involved and make everybody get along <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah. it it was like you know saying about that and it's really fascinating but that's a really good like if you are a january february baby make sure that you know which one yours is because i remember like on the primal zodiac website like i i clicked whatever the year like for my mom whatever hers was and it, it didn't calculate it correctly so i had to like click the year before um yes. so just make sure you look that up but um so, that's yes. really cool too to look up your primal zodiac which is the mm -hmm. combination of chinese and western i don't know that we'll ever do a an episode on that because it's so in depth i mean it's 12 times there's 144 of them right you just did math real fast well 12 times 12 <laughs> <laughs> uh that was my yeah. capstellium coming out Oof. <laughs> that was my Sagittarius laziness stellium being like, get a calculator, even if it's supposed to be a math fact. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, that's a lot to get into. Maybe we could do that for like the people we interview or something. Yeah, that would be fun to do. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot going on here. I feel like this is going to be a longish episode, but also like really really good shit. I don't know. I like the Chinese Zodiac. I don't know enough about it to be able to have a conversation with someone like I do like about the Western Zodiac, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, but it's really interesting to look up. And if, you know, being as I believe in Zodiac as it is, I really hope that the year of the ox is going to bring us what the year of the ox says it's going to bring us. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm saying positive, but February 12th, first year, of the new year, the new lunar year, the Chinese Zodiac. So, and you know what I've always wanted to do because of Fruits Basket, they would go like up on the roof and you watch the sunrise on the Chinese new year and you make a wish. Oh. And I'm like, I want to do that, but it's really cold that time of year. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a really good roof to climb out onto and like watch the sunrise from where I am. So Hook your head out the window. It'll be like... <laughs> I could even just like, yeah, look out the window. I don't have to yeah. go on the roof. But I mean, it's just like, it would be magical to go up on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and well, also, you got to get up early to do it. Exactly. <clears throat> Which, oh my goodness, I brought Penelope to dance the other day. And it was still light out. And oh. I was like, ooh. ooh. The seasons are changing It's because it's usually dark when I bring her to dance around five. And, uh, oh, yeah. Right. So that was very pleasant. We're getting more and more daylight. Yeah, it makes yes. a difference. Mm -hmm. But 
Anyways, we are not going to do a recap because that's a lot of information. Um, you can go back and re-listen. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice if you want to uh, hear it again. But yeah, it goes by your birth year. If you don't know what you are, look up your birth year and your birthday, January, February babies. And so there is sure. that there is that rotation of element every two years, the element mm-hmm. changes. So, And we'll post that chart as well so you can yes. see. Indeed. Um, yeah, there's a lot more to this. This is really just a brief overview. Um, Which it wasn't even that brief, and we did as best we could to make yeah, it brief. <laughs> it's a lot to cover to keep it brief, yeah. yeah. Um, so happy Chinese New Year. Yeah, happy Chinese New Year. And um, what's the reason that we're talking about the Chinese New Year's today? Because the stars made us do it. Happy Chinese New Year. <laughs> <laughs>